Hello everybody, this is Mr. Fry again with another video. This time I will be talking about factors affecting potential and uh, kinetic energy. Uh, and this will be more of a conversational video, so I'm going to go ahead and start it uh, kind of quickly here. I have given you the equation to solve for gravitational potential energy of an object, uh, though I will also discuss a few other forms of potential energy in this video. Okay, to start us off, uh, I want you to take a look at this um, image of the boulder that's sitting on the cliff. And um, you need to p potentially watch some of my other videos where we actually do solve this equation several times. Uh, but it, for this video, I want to talk about what affects uh, the potential energy of this boulder. Um, so keeping in mind that the equation in, for any object's gravitational potential energy is its mass times the acceleration due to gravity uh, on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, um, times the object's height above a frame of reference, which for us in, in this drawing here would be the ground. Uh, so this boulder has gravitational potential energy uh, that could be released and turned into kinetic energy if someone were to push it off the cliff or some, or maybe wind were to move it and cause it to fall. Uh, then we would see it um, convert into kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. Okay, um, but for now I want you to understand that the gravitational potential energy of any object depends on its mass. Uh, as well as its height above the frame of reference. Um, uh, also, it depends on the acceleration due to gravity, but in most physics problems, um, they occur on Earth, so this is a constant, so it would be 9.8, like we said a minute ago. Okay. Um, gravitational potential energy sometimes is abbreviated differently than what I have over here is GPE. Um, some textbooks and teachers will just put PE for that, uh, and also you notice it's mass times gravity times height, though I'm not a fan of this abbreviation simply because there are other forms of potential energy, like chemical potential energy that's stored in the bonds between atoms in, uh, in compounds. We also have nuclear potential energy and things like elastic potential energy, which I'll touch on that last one a little bit in this video. Um, let's look here. I've got one more visual for this slide. We've got the understanding here, the trying to make a point that more height will equal more potential energy as long as the mass of the objects is the same. So this object that's five meters above the ground uh, weighing 10 kilograms and this one over here only three meters above the ground also uh, with a weight or mass of 10 kilograms. So the one closer to the ground, the one with a lower height is going to give, um, is going to possess less gravitational potential energy. I also have these um, these images here for us to consider. Um, you should be able to guess why I put the apple tree up here. Um, apples hanging on a tree um, are above the frame of reference, which would be the ground, So, and they're usually motionless. Uh, so they possess gravitational potential energy due to their mass and their height above the ground. Uh, which you know eventually, uh, if nobody comes along and picks these apples, um, weather and time will eventually cause them to release that potential energy, converting it to kinetic energy and falling to the ground. Uh, I've also got the image up here on the top right of a wrecking ball, which uh, the actual ball part of it is, swing, is swinging back to the side here or beginning to swing forward. Uh, this is a lot like a pendulum, which we talk about in my class a lot and comes up later in this video. Um, this, uh, this wrecking ball here has potential energy because it is at the side of one of its swings and therefore it, is, it has height above the uh, relative frame of reference here. So this thing is, if it's swinging forward, it is converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy, which would then transmit to the building that it is trying to uh, demolish. Um, top right, you also see someone pulling uh, back a bowstring, uh, getting ready to shoot an arrow, uh, and that is an example of potential energy in the form of elastic potential energy, okay, which would obviously convert to kinetic energy, that of motion, as soon as the archer there releases the arrow. Uh, bottom right, I also have a roller coaster, uh, some little characters riding a roller coaster. You'll notice they're at the top of the hill, just starting to head downward. Um, and this image would represent a system that contains mostly potential energy at this point because the height is very high above the ground. Uh, but as this cart goes down this hill, they, the cars and the people in them would 
uh, begin to convert their potential energy due to gravity and height above the ground um, into kinetic energy as they go down that hill. Okay, which leads me into talking briefly about kinetic energy and some of the things that um, that affect it. So the kinetic energy of an object depends on its mass and its velocity or speed. Okay, I've got some other uh, visuals here for you. I have a running cheetah. Uh, obviously, cheetahs run very quickly, um, and they have mass. Uh, so both of those things determine its kinetic energy, keeping in mind that all energy, kinetic, gravitational potential, um, or any other form, uh, always is measured in joules. I also have a moving baseball here. Since they have mass and velocity, uh, they contain kinetic energy. Now, if the baseball is flying upward, it would be converting its kinetic energy. It would be slowing down. Its velocity would be decreasing. And it would be converting that with increasing height into gravitational potential energy. Okay. Um, I want to brace you because some textbooks, teachers, and state exams and things will abbreviate these differently. I showed you the one that was just PE for potential energy, whereas I usually put GPE to specify its gravitational potential. Uh, I have seen state tests where they will put E with a sub K or E with a sub P to represent kinetic or potential energy. This one here is for kinetic energy. It's the exact same equation, one half mass times velocity squared. Uh, I just wanted to expose you to the other formats that you could see these equations in. Uh, bottom of the screen I have a tractor trailer and a motorcycle both in motion. Uh, and I just want to assume they're traveling at the same velocity or speed to the right. Um, but if you were asked a question about which one of these contains more kinetic energy, um, you would have to make the assumption or read in the problem that the velocity is the same. Um, however, you could safely conclude that since the tractor trailer has a lot more mass, that whatever that velocity is, um, is going to be multiplied by a whole lot more kilograms worth of mass. So the tractor trailer is going to have a lot more kinetic energy as long as velocity is the same. Okay, I've got several small examples here above mechanical energy uh, being conserved. So in most of these examples, or all of them I believe, um, friction is being ignored. So the total amount of mechanical energy stays constant. Uh, that means that the, when you add the potential and kinetic energy together, no matter what part of the motion you're talking about these objects in, the total should add up to the same number of joules of mechanical energy. So for a bouncing basketball, that potential energy um, gets changed. It has height as it's heading downward, but it's decreasing its height. Uh, however, when it's up here high above the ground, um, it has height, therefore it has gravitational potential energy, which converts to kinetic as gravity pulls it downward or the, um, the player pushes it downward. Um, and when that ball bounces back up, uh, so once, uh, once it hits the ground, it has zero gravitational potential there due to zero height above the ground. But that uh, elastic nature of the basketball, since they bounce and, and they uh, are able to um, get smashed on the bottom here and, and rebound upward, to, in other words, bounce back upward, that's a form of uh, elastic potential energy when the ball is down here on the ground, but it would have no gravitational potential at that point. Um, but the elastic potential that it has here when it bounces causes it to, again, begin to um, accelerate upward um, with kinetic energy that's changing back into gravitational potential since height is increasing again. Let's look at a couple of other things here. Um, this is an example of projectile motion. Um, and this girl here has kicked the soccer ball. And it's wanting, this image is trying to get the point across here that since the velocity is the highest right when she kicks the ball, um, and also right before it strikes the ground again. The velocity being the highest is an indicator that kinetic energy is the highest there. Again, if you look at that equation, one-half mass times velocity squared, uh, the velocity being the highest here and here is going to cause kinetic energy to be the highest in those two places as well. Um, also, uh, at the top here, this position, that is where the height is at a maximum, so gravitational potential energy would be the highest at that point. Uh, these intermediate positions here, you would have a decreasing kinetic energy and an increasing gravitational potential energy. And in this position here, you would have a decreasing gravitational potential and an increasing kinetic energy. And again, that's due to that increasing kinetic is because the velocity starts to increase again. Uh, it begins to speed up again after it hit its slowest point up here. 
I also have an, um, kind of an honorable mention here because I talk a lot about gravitational potential energy, but I don't spend as much time talking about elastic potential energy. And just wanted to get the point across that when someone pushes on an object or on a spring uh, or anything else that's elastic, we did mention it, the elastic nature of a basketball a second ago, uh, but here this is a, a more obvious example of um, someone storing energy, they're exerting a force and doing work on this spring, uh, but it's storing those joules of work, those joules of energy in the, the position of the spring, which then can then be released again as kinetic energy, so uh, elastic to kinetic uh, would be the energy transformation happening there. I also have a roller coaster car here with some labels on it I think is worth looking at. Um, we have a roller coaster car descending um, downhill here where we have a high potential energy, a high gravitational potential due to that high height, but a low kinetic energy due to its relatively low speed at this point. However, at the bottom of the hill, that speed has greatly increased. In fact, this is the lowest point uh, on the track, so this would be the maximum kinetic and the minimum gravitational potential energy here as well. Um, the car then gains some height over here, uh, losing a little bit of its velocity, but not much because it's not going up very high here. So it's still moving pretty quick. Uh, so it still has a high kinetic energy, but not the maximum. Uh, and it has a low potential energy, but not quite as low as it did here when height was zero. Okay. I also have, uh, this is a more quantitative example of uh, the conservation of mechanical energy. Um, keeping in mind that the total kinetic and potential has to add up to the same number as long as we can ignore friction. And you can tell here that that's exactly what happens is this skier goes down the slope, increasing their speed um, and decreasing their height. Therefore, you have an increase in kinetic and a decrease in potential. Uh, they reach the relatively lowest point so far here. However, they're still 30 meters above the reference level, which is the very end of the track. So here they have mostly kinetic and some potential. After making this jump, they make a, um, a quite a bit of an increase. They double their potential energy from this point up to this point. It goes from 15,000 to 30,000. And they're slowing down as they go through that jump, at least until they get to the top of it, uh, where kinetic energy has dropped from 35,000 to 20,000 joules. And then upon reaching the ground, they are uh, right before reaching the ground, I should say, all of their energy then has been converted uh, to kinetic energy. Once height is zero, then potential energy for due to gravity. So GPE would be zero at this point. Okay. And let's see, last and not least, I have um, a couple images here of a pendulum. Now a pendulum is uh, simply some mass hanging from a string that can swing back and forth. Um, it could be modeled using a swing set or several other things like a grandfather clock and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but this image does a great job, or these series of images do a great job showing you that um, we have, when you have to assume that the pendulum can swing in both directions, um, you can see that as the pendulum bob increases its height, it, ha it slows down, so the kinetic energy decreases in that direction. Um, as it's approaching in this diagram from the right to the left, going from A to D, it's decreasing its height and increasing its velocity, so it's speeding up, so kinetic energy increases at that point, or throughout that range of motion. Uh, you'll notice the uh, when the pendulum swings the opposite direction, those are opposites because the pendulum bob is moving, um, compared to this diagram, backwards. It's going the other way now. So as it's decreasing its height, it's increasing its velocity. So you have a increase in speed or kinetic energy, and it slows down over here, so it decreases. Uh, the bottom of the screen is all about the potential energy of the pendulum. You'll notice that potential energy increases as height increases and decreases as height decreases. Okay. So in, it would be safe to say um, that kinetic energy is proportional to velocity. So if velocity increases, kinetic energy increases. Sorry, I should have been pointing right here. Uh, and it should be safe to say that potential energy due to gravity, so GPE, is proportional to height. So if it goes higher in the air, it's going to have more potential energy. And you can see over here that as height decreases, um, uh, gravitational potential energy decreases as well. Okay. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe if you think it's helpful. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was Mr. Fry's Physical Science.